Ture, and I am born and brought up in Gunjur. And here I work as a garden manager. We started uh, 2006. Then after, there was a breach of uh, uh, contract between the foundation of here and the women. So they left, and now we are starting a new project. That is, we changed the name to Gunjur Women's Garden from Holland Foundation because we felt like uh, we are having a new direction, different administration now. So from 2018, so 2018 up till now, there is a new foundation and there is new organization or administration that is taking care of this garden. So I am the one as a manager spearheading it or as a supervisor. Well, the project is all about poverty alleviation. And secondly, we try to also create jobs for ourselves and for our uh, kids on the ground also. For the uh, uh, elderly women and for the kids, you can see the ones who are trying to uh, uh, learn the skill center. They try to become a professional teller in the sense that they could do something in the village that is uh, to live uh, positively in, in the village. Like earn their own train to become a sailor, become a professional, you can have your own workshop and then you can go on with your life, support your family. We went as cheap as uh, every three months, $100. So the girls will pay, but that payment also, sometimes if they spoil the CISO, then we're going to use that money to buy the CISO. Because there are sufficient trays and maybe the machines also when they are damaged. That is, the money is not even sufficient. So we try to be low so that they could have the, uh, the education to complete their training. So we were thinking about also to become uh, uh, like a school, you know, formal way of uh, doing things, you know. So one thing we try to deal with and we are dealing with, that is how to sustain the place every day. You can see inside uh, there is clothing on the wall. So sometimes if it is not this coronavirus, we will see visitors coming in and they will buy. So right now we are thinking about also to have a shop outside and then maybe we could go with things there and people can come and they could, you know, buy it and we could save the money. But it's not working as the way we expected it. So thirdly, uh, we try to do also, if any girl that is come, uh, going out here with our friends that are helping us, we try to give them machines. In that machine, we'll charge you for 2005. That 2005, would be a revolving fund that would buy also maybe another machines if you go but that 2005 will be in six month time you will pay so if you if you, uh, if you do your course here up to one year five months and then we are going to give you with your machine but we'll charge you for 2500 you go when you graduated and then I, as a supervisor, will also go to your village or maybe where your center is. We will supervise what you are doing there. But in the meantime, maybe you, out of your own free will, you could say maybe this month I pay 500 or maybe I pay 600. So until you finish maybe uh, nearly six month time. So that is our, our mechanism that we put in place for, for the center. But as of now, the materials that are there, uh, people will uh, donate us and people will just give us. And it becomes sufficient for uh, sometimes it takes a while before even trays are finished or maybe clothing are finished. So at uh, one time also, we will go out and then buy these African uh, dresses so that, you know, the half turn maybe I buy or maybe the teacher buy or maybe the women who are inside the garden will buy from us. So that's how the center is going and that is our mechanism for, for the center to sustain.
feel uh, we have 210 women and in the uh, sewing class we are having 15 students. Then there is a fee of $75 uh, you pay at the initial stage and after when you do that one then you are part of us. That is the garden rules. Women that is having $75 they pay and the commitment like clearing and cleaning. So now from there you will see the woman got the plot for, for the lifetime. Because in this plot, you are going to maybe, not to rent it, but you can give it to your kids when you are not there, or you can give it to your in-law, or you could give it to anybody that you wish you can work with. And then you continue with that. So each woman is having around eight beds, because it's three hectares. So now we distribute it uh, into different, different sectors. Uh, but you can see inside the garden also uh, uh, the women, they are working with eight boys. So each year they will pay also maybe uh, uh, $100 each for if there is a maintenance or if there is a watchman or uh, any necessary things that is necessary inside. So I, as a uh, supervisor or manager, you can see all this uh, are all recording. I will buy some things and I will call a meeting and then we justify it, our money through what we buy. Yeah, they sell it by themselves, but I am the one arranging the marketing for them. Like we were working with Concern Universal and Concern Universal I think is no more or is there, but they are uh, pertaining to their horticultural side. They are not working with us anymore. So the, there was uh, another project called Gambia is Good. I work with those people also, but they also face out. So now we have these local uh, vendors that are coming inside the garden. They buy this product from here and then they take it to Sukuta or Brikama or Bakao or Serekunda. So they come here. Early morning before you come, there were a lot of them here. They will buy the spring onions and tomatoes or something. They will take it to the various places that they come from. The women will get all the money and then spend it on their kids or their, with their family. Because sometimes some women, I will hear their story, they are helping even their husbands. And that is more interesting, I think. <laughs> As a manager, I don't see the husband coming out here and clear the area for them. But I see the women also, if the husband is not uh, okay with the financial thing inside uh, the family, then the women they support. I am the only male here with my uh, teacher inside, but I think males, uh, they feel too highly, I think. To be honest, I'm a man, but <laughs> we feel we are the boss of the house, you know, so we should not be directed or something. We, we are targeting women, but also males also, if they are really interested. But as you can see, even papakayas are watering and then plus the garden. I try to lobby some men, but they feel like they want to walk in Serekunda or Banjul. And that is not my opinion, huh? Because I try, I try, as my father, I try to go to work with certain people, but I feel like here yeah, is more good and I like it. thing is there that is the biggest challenge we try to tackle that is sustainability if if we could uh, and that is every day my thinking how to sustain the whole project and in five years time I think uh, we could be able to sustain ourselves because uh, already if you look at the chicken area I don't buy uh, trace you know so I took it to the massing if the machines, uh, if, the, if the eggs are hatched, then we are having new babies. So I think maybe five years time, uh, we will have a lot of chickens, I believe, and we will have a lot of maybe these ones graduated, and then a lot of uh, finance in our account, and plenty of also maybe papakayas that we sell, and I hope uh, 
the tourism uh, sector come back so that we could supply even cocoa ozone or anywhere, you know. I just want things to go and uh, we are having a, a self-creation job that we created uh, for ourselves and I want to stay that way. Yes, so in five years time, I think it will go. But one thing I'm scared, you know, that is, uh, yeah, I have a positive mind towards this. But what if, if, if Lamin is no more? <laughs> I challenge a lot of people to become even assistant, come, you work. But they want to put this black tire. No, 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 I'm not doing that. I like it this way. If anybody that want to get involved with our uh, with our system, uh, with the project, they are feel free. In the nursery said, we have two uh, volunteers from uh, UK. They come and then we did a lot of the whole day. We were putting papakayas. Now those papakayas are the one even 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 uh, uh, even maturing. So normally we send some photos to them and say to them, this is how your papakayas are doing. So if they come, there is a poultry house and there is a sewing center and there is a greenhouse and there is a main field. They could come with uh, anything, stay if they want. Our African food also, they could, they could cook here. And then we have fun together. But one thing is there, that is, uh, even outsiders, you know, we are learning each other's culture. Culture in the sense that they are having their culture, we are having our culture. So, if they come, they are, they are most welcome. And in time of if they want to reside with our local uh, families, ha, they are welcome. I think we all have to have uh, appreciate and accommodate each other in the sense that you know it's different uh, the same people with different mentalities so however you are however you are wherever you are we are still the same one people it doesn't matter whether you are black and white or something i don't believe in that i believe what is inside the heart you know i believe that man yeah uh, it shouldn't be racist or something, no. But what is coming out of my mouth, or maybe this belief in that, and then we behave like a uh, human. That is my message to the world.